Hey guys, welcome to this video on the C programming language. So in this video, I want to create a program that represents the combination formula. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a description of what our program does. Okay, so this program has a function that represents the combination formula. All right, and now the combination formula I will write here below is NCR, which is equal to N factorial divided by R factorial times N minus R factorial. Okay, so let's go ahead and start coding this up. First thing we're going to do is include our library, stdio.h, and then we're going to create our main function so that we have that set up already. And I'm going to return an integer value like 0. Now let's declare our functions. So here we're going to declare our functions. Now we're going to have two functions. First we're going to have a um, factorial function because we're going to need to know what exactly is r factorial and what's n factorial. We're going to want those values. So I'm going to create a factorial function that's going to take in an integer value that we'll call x. All right, and this is again the factorial function. And then we're going to have another function that's going to be our combination uh, formula. We're just going to call it combination integer n, and it's going to take in an integer r. So it's going to take an integer n and integer r. And that's our uh, combination formula and our combination function as well. All right. So let's um, create our factorial function first. So we have integer factorial. All right, and it's going to need to return some integer value for now, so we're just going to return zero. Now, how does factorial work? Well, an example would be 5 factorial, and 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if I do another example, um, let's say we have 0 factorial, then we just get 1. And that's basically it. Maybe we'll do one more example. Let's say example here. And we'll, we will do 3 factorial. So 3 factorial will be equal to 3 times 2 times 1. So you can kind of see how uh, the factorial function will work. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is create a variable called fact and it's going to be equal to 1 and what we're going to do is return fact for now. Alright, now if our value x is 5 then we want to multiply it by every number that's less than it, every positive integer that's less than it. So I'm going to do or create a for loop and in order for that I need a variable to iterate through. So I'm going to create a variable called i, an integer variable called i, and now let's go ahead and write our for loop. So for i equals x, uh, this will run while i is greater than or equal to 1, and then i is going to decrement each time. And then we want our fact variable to equal i times whatever fact is. Okay, and then we're going to return fat. So now this should give us um, a, a a good factorial function here. So let's give this a check. If we have five, then our i is going to equal five. We're going to check to see if five is uh, greater than or equal to one, and it's not. So we're going to have fact equal 
5 times 1, so we get 5. So now fact equals 5. And I will decrement by 1, so I becomes 4. And now we're checking to see if, um, if 4 is greater than or equal to 1, and it is. So fact is going to become 4 times whatever fact was before, which was 5, so 4 times 5. So now fact equals 5 times 4, which is 20. And then I is going to decrement, and I is going to become 3. We're going to check to see if 3 is greater than or equal to 1, and it is. So fact is going to equal 3 times uh, whatever fact was before, which was 20, or 5 times 4. So now fact equals 5 times 4 times 3, which is 60. And then it does the same thing. Um, I is going to decrement by 1, so I becomes 2. Then we're going to get um, 2 times 5 times 4 times 3, or 2 times um, 60. So we get 120. And then I decrements again, and it becomes 1. Is 1 greater than or equal to 1? Yes, it is. So we get 1 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 uh, times 1. And so that gives us 120 for a fact. So it looks like this is going to work out just fine. Now let's go ahead and create our combination function. All right. And here we're going to return just the formula. So I'm going to go back up here and copy and paste this formula down here so we can use it. Alrighty. So all we need to do is return n factorial. So that's factorial of n divided by or not factorial of n, but factorial with the parameter um, n. And that divided by r factorial. So that's factorial uh, with the parameter r times n minus r factorial. So that's factorial with the parameter n minus r. All right, and that should give us our combination formula. So now if we had a question like how many ways can a team of three people be formed from a group of six people, Then the answer is, so we're going to print the answer here. Answer equals percent D. We're going to do a new line. Equals the combination 6, comma, 3. Or um, another way of saying that is we have 6, choose 3. All right, and let's give this a run and see if this works. All right, excellent. So our answer is 20, and we can double check that math. So our combination should be given n equals 6 and r equals 3, we get 6 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 6 minus 3 factorial. And this equals um, 6 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 3 factorial. Okay, and this is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, and this gives us um, basically 5 times 4, which equals 20. 
So it looks like the combination formula is working properly. All right. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions you have in the comments section. I will be sure to put a link to the code in this video um, that's on my GitHub. I'll put that in the description. So uh, yeah, please leave likes, subscribe, share the video if you found it helpful. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.